Hey guys, so for today in our social media boot camp, the topic is going to be just some organizational and technical tips and a few other things, um, kind of a hodgepodge. But the first thing that I wanted to spend some time talking about was getting organized because especially once you're starting off with um, trying to post a social media consistently, it is going to take, it's going to take some planning and some effort, um, you know, as you kind of make it a habit, just like anything else, it does get easier over time, but there still should always be some thought and planning that goes into what you're, um, into what you're going to be sharing. I just thought of something else, so I'm jotting it down here. Okay, so in terms of getting organized, um, you've got to make a plan. So if that means for you, um, you know, mapping out a calendar of your week, of what your posts are maybe going to look like. I know for me, um, what I try to do is either like Sunday or Monday morning, I'll kind of sit down and just take a couple couple minutes and I'll look at my week and um, I'll actually like put on my calendar specifically like, you know, if really like the business related posts. So if I'm going to do like a challenge group invite or if I'm going to do a coaching breadcrumb or a, um, you know, like a transformation Tuesday post or maybe a WCW, like a shout out to somebody. I like to put those on my calendar just as little reminders because those are the ones that are often sometimes challenging for me. And then what I do is I use one of the pages from the coach tracker file that actually is available in the file section of our team page. And it sort of has a layout, of like a little checklist of, you know, Sunday, um, like the whole week, Monday through Sunday. And it has all the power hour tasks, but it also has that little section at the bottom where it kind of breaks down the different like types of posts you might have, whether it's like a nutrition or workout related post, a motivational post, a personal um, like personal lifestyle post, something where you're adding value, but it's got little checks so you can literally like for each day kind of check off, okay, um, you know, did I do a motivational one today or a workout today or whatever it was? And it's just nice because it visually kind of allows you to keep track and see, um, and make sure that you're kind of hitting all of those areas. So I would definitely recommend checking out that file and um, actually pages four and five in that file could be very helpful in terms of power hour and also just in terms of kind of having like planning your posts and keeping track of what you are posting about. So anyhow, that's kind of what I do. But you know, if in the beginning you need to like map every single one out, then that's that's what I would do because honestly, it can it can take a lot of time when you sit there and are trying to think of something on the spot, especially if it's like three times a day at least, right? Because that's the goal, three to five posts a day. And so of course you wanna you don't want to be wasting your time <laughs> having to sit there and try to rack your brain. So if you dedicate, you know, like 10, 15 minutes in the beginning of the week to just kind of having a little game plan then that's going to help tremendously. Um, but again, you want to just make sure you're going to, you know, hitting everything, getting your workout stuff in there, nutrition, or about your Shakeology, those personal, relatable, adding value posts, business-related posts about coaching, about your groups, just things that are inspiring or that you're sharing from personal development. Um, but that's kind of the, you just want to create kind of a layout for what you want to be sharing, um, what you're, what you want to be sharing. So the other suggestion in terms of getting organized and specifically with, um, with posting, one thing that I do is I will keep a running list of post ideas on my phone. Like I use the, um, I use the app. Um, well, actually I think I just use it. It's on my list. A list app that I have. It's called Any Do. But anyhow, I've got like a bunch of lists on there. And I can show you right now, actually. One of them is literally post ideas. 
And it's not that I necessarily sit there and try to rack my brain and think of things to add to this list. It's just when I randomly get something that pops into my head that I'm like, oh, that would be really good to post about. I'll add it to my list. Because maybe like if I'm set for my post for that day or maybe it's just like an odd time where I don't think the post would maybe get a lot of action, then I'll just add it to my list kind of as a backup. Um, but you can see here, I've just literally got this random like random list it's and it's a it's a mix of things that are like coaching related versus just a lot of it's like random stuff that happens with Christian or little things that come to mind um, that I've just jotted down here so um, so I recommend doing that because that way you've kind of got a, like a last resort <laughs> and if you're ever are to the point where you're struggling to think of something I know that happens to me sometimes I'll kind of get in a funk or feel like I'm in a rut and don't know what to post about and so um, that way you know you're not just that way you're not just trying to post you're not just posting something for the sake of posting something if that makes sense um, so that way if you've got a little list you can refer to that's just a great a great resource to pull from when you are you know maybe short on time or if your mind is just totally blank on what to share so I'd recommend doing that. Um, now in terms of kind of going back to the calendar or if you're somebody who is, you know, if you're like, if you're working full time during the day and you don't have a chance to get to your phone, then what I would really, really encourage you to do is to look into some free apps that allow you to schedule your posts. Um, I use Buffer. I don't really use it. I don't use it a lot, um, probably, I probably should try to utilize it more for my personal Facebook page posts. I really use it for my, um, like running my, my five and seven day groups on Facebook, I use it to schedule those posts. But I have used it before, or like if I know for a fact that I'm going to be tied down at a certain time and it's going to be hard to post something, then I might get something scheduled on Buffer. But I use Buffer. Hootsuite is another popular one. But um, you know, you don't have to use it all the time. But say again, going back to the example, if you're working full time and it's hard for you to get like a midday post in there, then maybe that can be something you do at the beginning of the week, like on Sunday or maybe Monday morning, is just sit down and literally just schedule out um, a post for that particular time of day for the entire week, and then you don't have to have to worry about it or stress about it and it can be something simple it could be just simply sharing like a thought of the day or a tip of the day or um, maybe that would probably be a good time to maybe schedule like an engaging post um, yeah, so like if you're looking for advice on something or just I don't know just something engaging to get people um, to get people interacting on the post so Think about using a scheduling app if you know that it's going to be a struggle for you to consistently post at the times you need to post. So, okay, so that's just a little bit in terms of getting organized. I just kind of have a little hodgepodge here of other random tips uh, in terms of posting on social media. And one of those is that, again, you have to remember that your page is your storefront, right? And so you want it to look good when people go and are scrolling through. Um, you know, it's not to say that you have to be a professional photographer because trust me, I'm not and most of us aren't. But there are just little tips and tricks you can do to make your um, your posts and like your pictures in particular, make, like make them look a little more attractive and just eye catching. Um, and so, you know, that can be just as simple as using different filters or just learning what good angles are. Like even with food pictures, I found that, you know, just changing the angle can make a huge difference, whether you're going like straight up above it versus just getting a little angle and kind of letting, um, you know, the food itself be the main part of the picture. Um, but there's some helpful, again, free apps that you can use. And so one of the first ones I started using way back when I started coaching was uh, Rona, R-H-O-N-N-A. And that one I will use. It does have some good filter options, but the main thing I use it for is 
the text that you can add on to it. So if you're going to like, you know, slap a quote on a picture or just, you know, if it's like a group invite and you want to have text on it, that's the one that I like to use. Um, one that I started using recently is Photo Wonder. And the main thing that I use that for is like all the filters. So um, if I'm, if for some reason I'm not posting, like on Instagram, I have a specific filter that I like to use all the time. And so if I'm not going through Instagram for the post for some reason, uh, and then, you know, reposting it on Facebook, then I'll try to use this Photo Wonder app because you can there's just, there's so many more filter options and there's some really cool ones that I've found that I like. And you can either, um, you can either use the app to actually take the picture with the filter set, or you can um, pull up the app, use the edit feature, and then just pull a picture from your camera that's already there, and then just play around with the different filters to see what you like. And again, this is stuff that you don't want to be spending like, you know, you don't want to have, you don't want to be spending five minutes editing a photo, um, but. It's just, again, just little things that you can do to kind of make it look more appealing. And honestly, I found that when it comes to filters and things like that, I always kind of go back to the same ones. And that's a time saver too, because then you're not constantly trying to like find some new different ones. And then there's also a little bit of like consistency with how your, your pictures are looking. So um, Pick Stitch is one that I use a lot for collages. Uh, so I like that one. And then if I'm doing incorporating a video somehow, uh, then I will use pick play post often because you can do a combination of pictures and videos. And so I love using that, especially for my workout posts. So lots of great options out there. Like I said, just for making things look professional and look a little more appealing um, to the eye when somebody's it's going to be, you know, scrolling your, your page. Um, in terms of selfies, okay, you know, you got to get creative. So I know a lot of us are kind of used to doing our standard like sweaty workout selfies, and that's that's part that's great, that's wonderful. Um, and um, I think just you know don't be afraid to like switch it up. And I know it took me a while to try to kind of relax and be a little bit silly, but you don't always have to be smiling all pretty in your pictures. You know, if you do a goofy face or a silly face now and then, that's always just a nice way to keep it fun and mix it up. So a combination of sweaty, silly, smiling um, are great. And then kind of with the selfie, um, on the selfie topic, um, I know for me, like I don't, <laughs> I don't really get dressed up very often or like do my hair that often. So when I do, I try to take a picture or two just to have some selfies like on hand in my camera roll. I know that might sound silly, but that way if I'm going to be doing like a, you know, like a call for coaches post or just something that I want to, you know, make sure I'm looking good and professional, then I have those kind of just in my, in my camera, um, to resort to if, you know, if needed. So that's just kind of another, um, another tip. But yeah, with, when you're doing pictures of yourself, your selfies, adding text or a quote to them is always good. You know, instead of instead of maybe taking just like a Pinterest quote um, and saving the image and sharing that, which, you know, that's, that's okay to do now and then um, for sure. But it's also nice, it, you know, it, it also might be nice to switch it up and you can take that quote and just, you know, put it on a cute picture of yourself or, um, you know, whatever it may be. So, but people want to see you. Okay, so don't be afraid of, of sharing those selfies. You don't have to share two or three a day, um, but just, you know, make sure you are showing your face um, consistently. And then I guess the last tip I would say is, uh, and it's not really an organizational tip or anything, and I've probably shared this before, but just don't overthink don't overthink things. And I'm totally guilty of this, of spending like way too long trying to get the perfect wording and, you know, whatever. It's just, it's, you don't want to waste your time, <laughs> waste your time doing that. And like I said, the more you post and the more you practice, the easier it gets. And honestly, at the end of the day, everybody's going to have posts that bomb. You know, you might have some that get 
hardly any likes, no comments maybe. Um, and that's fine. Like it happens to all of us. And so, you know, worst case scenario, if it's something that you're expecting to get a lot of action and it doesn't and it totally bombs, you can always delete it and then try it to post it at a different time. Um, I've done that before. You know, I don't do it all the time. Um, sometimes I'll only get maybe five or six likes on a post and I just kind of leave it at that. But if it is something that I feel like could be super engaging and maybe just the timing was wrong, then I might delete it and try again a different time. Um, but the important thing too is just to learn from it. <laughs> so you kind of start to get a feel for the types of posts that you're sharing that tend to get a lot of action and those that don't. And maybe maybe it depends on the time of day. And so as you kind of play around with this, your posting schedule and what you're sharing, you'll you'll start to, you know, figure that out. So, um, so yeah, I think that's really, I think that's really all I have for you guys for this topic. And, um, yeah, so I hope you can check out some of those, maybe those apps or just other suggestions that I had for getting yourself organized, because that is going to be, that's going to be the biggest thing when it comes to consistency and posting which is usually the hardest part about posting is staying consistent. But if you're organized and have a plan, then, um, then it makes it much easier. So, all right. Thanks guys.